Sarawak has made good on its threat to sue Petronas over the 5% sales tax it owes on petroleum and petroleum products. The Sarawak Comptroller of the State Sales Tax and the State Government filed a writ of summons and statement of claim in the Kuching High Court today. There is no mention of how much is being sought, but the figure is understood to reach at least 1 billion ringgit. The oil giant is legally obliged to pay the sales tax under the State Sales Tax Ordinance 1998. However, it has refused to pay up, angering the state administration. Instead, it has reportedly offered a 3% goodwill payment with the condition that Sarawak dropped its sales tax claim and the implementation of the Oil Mining Ordinance 1958 to regain regulatory control over oil exploration in the state. Petronas is said to be the only oil and gas company operating in the state which has not paid the sales tax, which was enforced on January 1st. A special employees provident fund account will be set up for entitled individuals to receive incentives under the 6.5 billion ringgit Malaysia at Work initiative which will be rolled out nationwide in the second quarter of 2020. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng says the wage and hiring incentives under Malaysia at Work will be deposited directly into the individual's EPF accounts. This will help cover at least part, if not the entire portion, of both the employer's and employee statutory EPF contribution. This effectively increases a worker's take-home salary with any access to be credited into a special third EPF account. The funds can be withdrawn to cover an individual's daily needs or accumulated as retirement savings. Meanwhile, EPF CEO Tunku Ali Zakri Alias praises the scheme as a win-win for both employees and employers since it will also be cheaper for companies to hire somebody from the target groups under Malaysia at work. Malaysia at Work is a five-year stimulus plan aimed at creating up to 350,000 jobs. National Audit Department Director Noor Salwani Muhammad has admitted to being the one who recorded a coordination meeting that discussed the destruction of the original 1MDB audit report. Then a lower-ranking officer, Noor Salwani told the KL High Court she and other similarly ranked personnel were ordered to leave the meeting that took place on February 24, 2016. This was despite her being the coordinator of the 1MDB audit report team. Before she exited the room, Noor Salwani slipped a voice recorder into a pencil case belonging to another colleague who was allowed to sit in. No one at the meeting was aware of what she had done. After the meeting, she retrieved the recording device and played the recording before the auditing team before making a copy on a hard drive belonging to the department. Fearing repercussions, Noor Salwani said she decided to make another copy on a hard drive and also a thumb drive. Both were tendered by the prosecution as evidence. Petronas Dagangan shares took a tumble today as uncertainty over the US-China trade spat royal world markets. The counter fell to as low as 23 ringgit and 36 cent before pairing gains to close 2.4% lower at 23 ringgit and 58 cent. It was the top loser among the 30 FBM KLCI stocks today. The benchmark composite itself fell 0.56% to finish at 1592.19. On Wednesday, the U.S. House of Representatives almost unanimously passed two bills intended to support protesters in Hong Kong and during China. According to U.S. media reports, President Trump is widely expected to sign the bills into law, not veto them. That sent global markets sinking on concerns a fresh row would undermine trade talks between Washington and Beijing. Malaysian Resources Corp Berhad suffered an 87.3% plunge in net profit to 2.5 million ringgit in the third quarter of FY19, no thanks to lower revenue in all segments. Quarterly revenue declined 43.8% year on year to 372.74 million ringgit from 663.75 million ringgit. For the nine months of FY19, earnings came in 76.3% lower at 17.7 million ringgit, while revenue was down 43.4% year on year to 847.8 million ringgit. MRCB blamed the drop in revenue to the sale of two pieces of freehold land in Jalan Kiapeng in KL and Batu Feringgi in Penang last year, resulting in a total one off pre tax profit gain of 66.8 million ringgit in 2018. Additionally, the group's significant high-rise residential development projects are still in the early phase of construction, leading to very minimal revenue recognition. MRCB further explained that the lower income recognition was caused by the retiming of the LRT3 project, hence a significant decline in year-on-year -year pre tax profit.